What's up, trade hackers? Happy Friday. Today's November 1st. Welcome to this week's video update where we review all of the trades and all of our positions. Before we do that, let's jump into the community, talk about who got caught being hot. This week goes to Brad F. So congrats, Brad. Brad's been great. Uh, answering questions, sharing trade ideas. I actually took one of Brad's trades this week. So as I've always mentioned, great way to win the award is to bribe us with uh, good trade ideas. So nice work, Brad. Keep up the good work. Keep staying active in the community. It's really helpful for everybody involved. So thanks for all your contributions. Congrats. You got caught being hot. All right, let's go to the membership area and go through the alerts. By the way, uh, I know if you're listening to this, you are already a pro member. We are getting ready to increase our prices on our pro membership up to $179 a month and uh, $1297 a year, and that's going to take effect next uh, next week. So if you're a monthly member and you want to lock in the current $997 before it jumps up to $1297, just email support at navigationtrading.com and, and uh, we'll take care of you there. Um, otherwise, you're good to go. So let's go back to Monday, which was the 28th, starting with our first alerts of the week. And the first one was closing trade in SPX. So we had an iron duck in SPX and, uh, and price just ran higher. So we ended up just closing this out a little bit early, took the beak profit, another day, another beak. And uh, so we were out of that SPX iron duck trade. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in uh, forward slash GC, which is gold. So we added an iron condor with 59 days to expiration. And, um, and then the very next alert was where we closed out our December cycle trade. It was down to 28 days to expiration, had over 50% of max profit on that piece. So we just closed it out. So let's take a look at our current gold position. Uh, forward slash GC. So you can see price. Let me widen this out so you can see it better. Uh, GC price is pretty pretty well centered, up about 50 bucks on this piece since we put it on. Uh, so just waiting for some more theta to decay in our favor. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in BABA. So this was this is something that we don't do very often at all, but we had a pre-earnings long straddle on. And what happened is, let me go to the charts and just kind of give you an idea um, let's go to Baba, B-A-B-A. -B -A. So we put this on uh, back here somewhere. You know, implied volatility was really low. We were looking for implied volatility to expand leading up to earnings like it typically does. Uh, and what happened was price went up. And so we got a decent move. But look at what, but implied volatility just stayed pretty flat. And so what happened was, you know, up here on this day, after this decent move higher, we were still, we, I mean, we had just a tiny bit of profit. And so what we did in, you know, one option would have been just to close it out with a scratch. Another option would have been just to hold on to it. Um, and, and, but what we did is instead we rolled our strikes. We were at the 172 half. We rolled those up to the 177 half. And by doing that, we collected a credit to do so. And we kind of recentered our, our, um, uh, long, uh, long straddle. And so what we were hoping for is, uh, you know, again, some potential increase in expansion in IV. We got a little bit, but price stayed pretty steady. Had we held on to the original one with this price pullback, we would have taken a pretty decent loss on the trade. But by doing that rolling strategy up, uh, we went. At, we ended up taking a loss of like 20 bucks on the trade instead of what, it, what would have been hundreds. Um, so that that's what happened there. So we just rolled that up. And, uh, and then we later closed it before the earnings announcement. So that was the trade in BABA. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XRT. So we rolled our short strangle in XRT from November, which was down to 18 days to expiration, rolled it out to December, and we adjusted our puts up. So uh, price was uh, had moved higher, very little value left in our puts. And so we just rolled our puts up from 41 to 43, kept our calls the same, just like we teach in the course and then rolled it out to the next cycle. So if we take a look at XRT, uh, price has come down now back into center. So we've gotten back 170 bucks since that roll. And, uh, and so we're just playing, playing the waiting game, letting some more time pass before we do anything in XRT. 
Next trade, opening trade in shop. So we did a uh, uh, an earnings iron duck. So shop was set to uh, announce the following morning. So we wanted to get into this uh, on this day on 1028. So we entered that uh, with just four days to expiration. And just like we teach in part two of the class, uh, we just, you know, implied volatility is elevated. We're able to get way below the expected move on the downside with no risk to the upside. And uh, and so that's what we did there. We ended up taking that off for a for a small profit, just a, just a little bit more than beak profit on that one. And then we also did the same thing in Google, G-O-O-G-L. And uh, same thing, Iron Duck that we were holding over earnings. And we took both of those off today. Uh, if some of you guys took them off earlier, you, you may have uh, done better than us, but we, we held them uh, with today's massive price movement up in the overall market, pulling these stocks higher as well. Uh, you know, we had a shot at the duck head, but with prices moving higher, kind of moved us into the beak. And so that's what we took on those two trades. Took a little over beak profit on each of those. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XLK. So this is a long put vertical that we've been holding for some short delta exposure. And so uh, with price moving up, we just went ahead and rolled this, adjusted our strikes up to 87.82 and to keep that short delta exposure in our portfolio, which by the way, we, we, you know, we had uh, a couple discussions about short delta in the community this week. And, you know, I mean, with the, with the market ripping higher like it has, Anytime you have short delta, let's just go to the S&P, for example. Anytime you have short delta, when you have a period like this where, I mean, the market since the beginning of October has just ripped higher. I mean, when you have short delta, that's going to put a drag on your performance. I mean, there's just no way to get around it. And so the question is, how much how much short delta should you have? And we like to keep it in a range because th things can change really quickly, right? So we like to keep it in a range between one to one and five to one of our short delta versus our theta ratio. And so uh, right now we're at about three to one. And so, yeah, I mean, this this rip higher, does that go against our short delta positions? Yeah, absolutely. And so what can you do about that? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's really just a comfort level in kind of the discussion we had in the community. We like to stay in that range of kind of one to one to five to one. Uh, but, you know, you might you might, you know, I know uh, like Big Willie in the community, he likes to have a ratio, he stated many times of, uh, you know, between minus 300 and plus 300. So he doesn't mind having long delta in there either. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, you know, he's he's probably done better this year than us just because he's had more, uh, more long delta potentially. So it's just a comfort level. Uh, you know, it's always, a, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword, as I mentioned, where, you know, when you when you have a big rip higher like this, you wish you had long delta, obviously, right? In hindsight, but when the market moves down, like it did, you know, let's go to a, a yearly chart. You know, when when you have these big flushes down, like we've seen this year, uh, you know, three different times, you know, then you wish you had more short delta. You know, so trying to trying to balance that level because you're never going to be exactly right. You're never going to be able to put short delta on right here when it's getting ready to go down and then flip, put long delta on here. So the, the goal is really to just have a, a, a delta range in mind that you're comfortable with and that you can live with whether the market rallies or the market drops. And, and then you've just got to tweak and manage and massage that delta as you go along. Uh, so that's that's really all you can do. The other thing I didn't really mention in our conversation in the community is that's one of the actual, I, I mentioned this in the Iron Duck class, is the short delta dilemma, right? You we're putting on a lot of these delta neutral trades, iron condor, short strangles. And when you have the market rip higher like it has, you're automatically going to accumulate more and more short delta as the price moves to the upper end of, the, of your ranges. And so, you know, it's the short delta dilemma. Well, you know, how do you do that? Part of what I just mentioned is how you do it. You can either take off some short positions or add some more long positions to continually manage that. But that's, that's part of also why the iron duck is such a special strategy is because you have this huge buffer to the downside but yet you don't get killed on the upside, right? You have no risk. In fact, you make money on the upside. And so, you know, that that's that's part of the equation too, is, you know, continuing to uh, implement those iron duck strategies into your portfolio. It doesn't take away from doing verticals or anything like that, but uh, but definitely a good 
a good piece to the puzzle to help with that whole short delta dilemma as far as how much you should have and what types of positions you should have because you, you get those short uh, iron ducks on and you've got that huge buffer to the downside. So that kind of counts as short delta. Uh, but then you also don't get killed when things rip higher like they have. And, and obviously you can see with our iron duck trades, we've hit a lot of big profits and that's going to happen when you have, I mean, we did our class right at the beginning of October, October 2nd, I think it was this day was our first class and look what's happened ever since just nothing but upside. So, you know, that's a lot of, a lot of big profits in there. You know, we get, we get back to having a little bit more two side action. You know, we're going to, we're going to a be able to put on those for better credits, get further away from price and have that big buffer to the downside. So hopefully that helps, you know, it's, there's no, there's no right or wrong way to do it. We just kind of have our range of kind of one to one to five to one. And you've got to find what your comfort uh, level is based on your account size, your risk tolerance and all those good things. Uh, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in, oh, I don't think I, I, I don't think I showed you XLK. So we rolled that XLK long put vertical. And so you can see prices hanging out right here near our break. Even now it's moved up even since we put this on. So just looking for some downside to benefit that. Next trade was rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we had, uh, two sets of short call verticals in DIA. In this alert, we rolled one from November to December, and then we just adjusted our strikes appropriately. When we adjust these, we like to roll it so that we have about a 60% pop, 60% probability of profit. That's how we choose our strikes. Um, and, and so we, uh, and it keeps the short delta in our portfolio, extends duration. We've been just kind of using these as a, a downside hedge for some time, just kind of rolling these along. So if we look at DIA, Here's the one that we rolled. So price is right here. So it's come up a little bit since we did that roll. And then we've got our other piece here, uh, which you can see price has busted out of our range now. So we need some downside to get back into range on that DIA short call vertical. Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we entered a new iron duck in SPX. Did this one with 15 days to expiration. Whenever implied volatility is low and whenever it's, you know, prices are going higher, we like to we like to kind of do a little bit longer duration. In other words, if implied volatility is high and, and the market's going down, sometimes we can get into these with some shorter duration, like five days, seven days, even is down to as low as one or three days. Uh, but when it's going up and implied volatility is low, you got to go out a little bit further. So this one we entered with 15 days to expiration. And of course, the market's ripped higher since we put this on. And so let's click on that trade here. So you can see price is uh, way up in the duck beak now. Uh, if we put our uh, slices to break even, 11.14, change our calendar to the expiration date, 11.14. You can see, you know, prices right here. Our duck head's way back here. So just, just since, just in a few days, look how, look how far prices moved up. We're almost at the max of our, our beak there. And I've talked about this a couple times now. But we, if we move our, our break even right to the edge of the beak, you can see there's about a 25% probability that price could get back down uh, into that max profit area. So we're gonna keep this on for now. If this gets down to you know less than 10% chance of being able to get back down into this area, you know, that's when we will um, that's when we'll just close it out for big profit and then redeploy that capital into other trades. Next trade, closing trade in DIA. So we had an iron duck in DIA, of course, market moving higher. We booked a big profit there. Did a closing trade in IYR. So we had an iron condor in IYR and we'd had this on for quite some time, just managing, adjusting, staying mechanical. We ended up, uh, we ended up just, implied volatility was pretty low in IYR. So we didn't want to extend this. We didn't want to add another iron condor in the next cycle. So we ended up just closing it, ended up just taking a loss on the trade after all adjustments. But the good thing is we, you know, the silver lining is we went from what was a pretty big loss initially in the trade and we managed back to a smaller, smaller loss. So that's important too. That makes a big difference in your overall P&L over time. So don't discount that. Uh, closing adjusting trade in ZW. So we had an iron condor price moved higher 
and then we took off the put vertical side. So we had this remaining short call vertical and then price moved back lower. And so we ended up taking that off, ended up booking 50% of our original credit on that trade. So that was good. And then we've, uh, we've still got our, our other full iron condor in wheat. Uh, price moved up nicely today, so we're we're into the profit on that one. So we'll uh, we'll do something. You know, price continues higher. Obviously, we'll take this off next week, and if, if not, we will look to potentially reload and add another iron condor in here too. Still working our way back to profits in wheat. It's been a uh, long road in wheat, but uh, I think it's a great. A great trade just to continue to show people how we manage these trades as you go through time. Uh, you know, most people probably haven't started with us in that wheat trade and gone all the way through, uh, but we really like to use these as a learning tool as well to teach you how we adjust these things. And this is a, a really good example of that. Next trade, closing trade in BABA. So I already mentioned that. That was our pre-earnings long call. Ended up taking that small $20 loss on that one. We just didn't quite get the IV expansion we needed. So we were out of that one before earnings. Uh, next one was a closing trade in RUT. So we had a weekly double calendar in RUT. Ended up booking a nice profit of over 600. I think it was 605 to be exact. Uh, so we were out of that. I looked at putting on another weekly double calendar today on Friday. I uh, just didn't like the risk reward in there. So um, we'll, we'll take a look into early next week and potentially get another one of those on. Uh, but we are out of our weekly double calendars at this point. Next trade was rolling adjusting trade in ZB. So uh, we had a short strangle in ZB, uh, got down to 22 days to expiration. Uh, we just rolled this out to Jan with 57 days. And we were well over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And with just 22 days, just decided to roll the whole thing out in time. So if we go back to ZB, take a look here. You can see price is kind of hanging out pretty close to where it was when we rolled this thing uh, right here. And so it still gives us a little bit more upside room, which I like. And then just playing the waiting game, waiting for some time to pass. You know, originally, uh, not originally, but we did have two pieces on here. So if price were to you know, run down to around, you know, the break even or lower, we, we, we would potentially look to add another piece on here, assuming implied volatility was decent. But for now, we're just going to manage this as is and, uh, and getting back to profits in ZB. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in IWM. So uh, kind of like XLK, we had a long put vertical, just rolled this out from November to December and adjusted our strikes appropriately to get back to kind of that 60% pop. This, this keeps that short delta in our, in our portfolio and gets us back to a positive theta position. So if we look at IWM, uh, you can see prices moved up even after I did this. And so we're still, still within range, but just looking for some downside to benefit that. And lastly, uh, it was our closing trade in shop. So I already mentioned that. We closed that out for a little over beak profit. And looks like I need to refresh this page because it's not showing the Goog, the Google uh, trade that we that we closed as well. Let me see. I think I, I sent that out right before I started recording here. So if we go back to alerts, yeah, there's the Google one. So same thing. Book this for a little bit more than beak profit. And uh, so that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions. Um, 6B, uh, we've got a short strangle here that's been adjusted. We've got about $1,000 in profit since we rolled this. Um, we're, still, we're still a couple hundred dollars away from, from uh, profits overall after adjustments. So if we get a little bit of a downside movement in next week, we will close that one out for a profit. We've got, how many days do we have here? 35 days to expiration. So we've got some time. Uh, so just uh, we'll address that next week. If this thing continues ripping higher, we will potentially add another centered strangle there. Uh, implied volatility is still decent in uh, in the bond, in the uh, British pound. Oil big move today up three and a half percent, which is good for us. It just moved us right back into center, so we're up about three hundred bucks on this trade. Looking for some more profit before we take that off. Yes, we've got this long put vertical. I was, I was looking to potentially roll this today, but then price just kept going up. So I'm looking for a potentially a little dip before we roll that, uh, hopefully next week. Uh, GC, I mentioned gold. Natty Gas. Natty Gas has been on fire to the upside. Uh, I was kind of piddling around down here and then just started ripping higher. 
uh, but we're still that just kind of got us back into center as well here. So we've got these two different pieces. Now we're down to 24 days to expiration. So we'll be looking to roll both of these out to the next cycle next week. Uh, we'll do it one at a time. So we'll probably do one of these on Monday. We'll roll out and then uh, we'll wait a little bit, let price move around, let time pass a little bit, and then we'll roll the other one. And we'll, you know, unless this thing just rips higher, we'll probably be pretty close to at least 50% or more of max profit. So it'll make sense to do that anyway. Uh, so look for that next week. I mentioned ZB, ZW, Apple. Apple's up almost 3% today and moved out of our range. We'll be looking to roll or close that one next week. Uh, DE, John Deere, still within range here. So just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit that. Uh, I think I mentioned DIA. Yeah, I mentioned DIA. I mentioned IWM. QQQ, uh, price has moved out of range of those verticals as well. So we'll look to address at least one of those next week. And, you know, we're still at that, I look at this shaded area, that's the one standard deviation move. So there's still a decent chance price could come back into range here. Uh, so we don't want to make too quick of a quick of a, an adjustment, but we'll look to address those next week. SMH up almost 2% today. Uh, it's moved, you can see it's moved past that break even point. But if we look at our puts, we still have a decent amount of premium left in those puts. So we're not looking to roll up those puts yet. And we're not looking to add to this because implied volatility is just putrid. IV percentile of two, IV rank of four. So we're not looking to add to this at that point. Just going to manage the current one that we have. SPY, we've got an iron condor in SPY. You can see price is kind of hanging out here in the upper end of the range. So just holding on to that for now. I mentioned XLK and then I mentioned XRT. We've got this one where... We're just waiting for a little bit more profit before we do anything there. So those are all the trades. Those are all the positions. Hope everybody has a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week.